Hi folks, this is the second video in a series on how to record part of your church's worship service from your living room. A lot of our churches are asking us to do this right now, and I'll be honest, I think it's a really neat thing. I think it's a real gift. I think it's a way to live our true lives as, um, as part of our faith and, and share that with each other. Uh, so I'm really excited that your church is also doing this. I think it's great. Um, what I really want to do today is help you know how to do that a little bit more effectively. We are simply recording on cell phones, that's true, but with a little bit of uh, understanding a few things, we can really improve the quality of that. So I've got another video on how to improve the camera, the, the light of the video. But the most important part of any video is always the audio. A lot of people don't realize that, but the most important part of any video is the audio. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to improve the audio in your cell phone recordings. So you are hearing my living room. I happen to have a fairly small boxy living room, which is a great room to demonstrate the problems that many of us encounter when recording at home. Um, we have in my living room and maybe in a room in your house, uh, fairly bad acoustics. So we're gonna do a few things in this video and this room is gonna help us understand that. The first thing we're gonna do is talk about the two different kinds of audio problems we're gonna encounter. One uh, is just what happens when there's noises in your video, dogs barking or the hum of your refrigerator. The second thing we're gonna talk about is what do you do with acoustics, with uh, mediocre acoustics like in my living room. And the third thing we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna put this at the end, is some advice on if you want to buy another microphone for your cell phone. Long story short, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's gonna pay off in the acoustics most of us have to deal with. Before we get to all that though, here's a little perspective. You can hear in this recording how well you can understand my voice. And um, my camera is set up a similar distance from me that a cell phone would be set up for you, probably. And the microphone in my camera is of similar quality to the microphone in most of our cell phones. So what you're hearing now is the quality of a recording that you get out of a room like this. How big of a problem is it really? You can definitely tell that I'm recording in a small room, but the truth is you can also clearly understand what I'm saying and uh, it's probably not that much of a problem. So if you're having bigger problems than this, I hope this video is helpful to you, but I also want you to hear that if your recordings are at this quality already, it's fine, you're recording at home and everybody who watches the live stream or the video from your church is gonna know that. Roughly speaking, you're gonna have two acoustic problems with your cell phone recordings at home. The first one is pretty straightforward. You're going to have noise in the background. You might have dogs barking, you might have cars driving by, you might just have the hum of the compressor on your refrigerator. The solution to all of these noises is really straightforward. It's the same thing we do in recording studios. The answer is wait until those noises aren't happening. There's, there's no magic solution to that. Um, so if it's, that's easy, if it's a car driving by, you just wait for the car to go by. It's a bit more difficult if it's a sound in your home. If it's a dog barking outside and a dog barks once, the truth is just leave it in. It's fine, everybody knows you're recording this in your home. But if it's something more of a hum, like your AC system, your HVAC system, or the compressor on your refrigerator, you probably need to figure out how to either wait for that noise to stop or record somewhere where you can't hear it. There's no great solution to that. Um, if you're thinking that don't the recording engineers have noise reduction software, that's may be true depending on who's editing your video, but even with good noise reduction software, it doesn't work as magically as people sometimes think. So it might reduce the, reduce, not eliminate, but reduce the hum of the compressor on your refrigerator, but it's never gonna make it go away. And while it's doing that, it's also going to uh, have a big detrimental impact on the tone of your voice, which 
is probably the more important thing. So the solution with those hums and things like that, a fan, things like that, just find somewhere else to record or wait for that noise to stop. So you can hear in the recording that I am recording in a small room. You can just hear it. The way you can hear that, the way that your brain knows that, is that it can hear the way that the particular dimensions of the room we're in and the walls of the room we're in emphasize certain frequencies and minimize other frequencies. And your brain, having lived for years, knows that, oh, that's what small rooms sound like. But that's what's causing it. Certain frequencies are emphasized and other frequencies are de-emphasized as sound bounces around the room. So if that's a big enough problem in your recordings that it's inhibiting intelligibility, if it's kind of hard to understand what you're saying, um, there's really three solutions to that. One is to move into a much larger room. That's, for some of us, that's easy to do. For me, that's not easy to do. I, I really don't have a much larger room. But if you have one, larger rooms tend to kind of sound better, or they at least sound really different. So give that a shot. If that works and you can get good light in a larger room, then that's great. The second solution is to move into a room that doesn't have parallel walls to each other, or at least minimizes them, or in some other way, breaks up the sound and let, makes it so that it doesn't just bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between the same two walls. That's the second solution. The third solution is to uh, literally stop the air from moving in the middle of your room, or at least reduce the amount of sound air that's moving in the middle of your room. Let me show you some of those solutions. One solution to the problem of sound moving around and bouncing off all these parallel walls is to get in a room where that doesn't happen as much. So you can get in a room, in my house, the best solution to that is to take advantage of the fact that I have a, um, a I think they call it an A-frame house, where upstairs, we're upstairs in my um, office and lately my video editing studio, and you'll see that I have walls here that come up in an arch. And that means that there, as sound bounces off of the sound bounces off of this wall, it doesn't bounce straight into another wall. It kind of bounces at an angle and moves around and breaks things up. So, and then additionally, there's the bookshelf behind here. There's the bookshelf behind here that also scatters sound as it as it hits things. So that's one solution: is to get in a room that doesn't let sound just bounce back and forth it scatters the sound for some reason or another. In fact, lots of recording studios use this technique. It's a lot more common than you might think. We were upstairs in my studio and I told you there was one more solution you can try to improve the acoustics in your house if you, uh, if you can't find a room that's just oddly shaped. And that solution is this. You can put acoustic treatment in the middle of the room. You can see that here. It's not awesome. It's not a solution I think most folks are gonna like, but it does work pretty well. You can see what I did here. I literally found a couple of ladders. I was fortunate to have a few ladders in this case and put a bunch of blankets on top of it. And then I put that in the middle of the room. It's ugly. It's kind of a hassle to set up, but the truth is it only took a few minutes. Um, so the reason this works, let's go through why this works, is because it gives the, it stops the sound from moving and bouncing between walls. It doesn't stop it as much as I would like. I probably would like to stop it even more, but it, it does a lot. It contributes a lot. And you can hear the difference in the tone of my voice. So let me speak right now, and you can hear the tone of my voice with this thing in the middle of the room. And this, you can hear, is what it sounds like when I remove the ladders. It sounds pretty different. I'm going to keep talking so you can hear how it sounds. The last thing I want to talk to you about is microphones. The truth is, most folks, when they ask me how to improve the audio quality on their recordings, they start the conversation by asking about microphones. The trouble is, microphones aren't much help when you already have a pretty good microphone in your cell phone and you have crummy acoustics. You really need to improve the acoustics first. But 
If you are gonna try and use microphones to improve things, the answer is not a Blue Yeti. The answer is not a shotgun microphone. A lot of people ask about those. They're very directional microphones, or at least they're marketed as very directional microphones. The only way to improve things with an external microphone on your cell phone recordings is to get the microphone much closer to your mouth. When you move the microphone closer to your mouth, in effect, you're just making your voice much louder, right? Well, then the person who's editing the video actually just lowers your volume a little bit so you get to the appropriate volume. And when they lower the volume of your entire recording, they've also lowered the volume of the room acoustics. You're sort of playing a ratio game. When you get the microphone closer to the mouth, you get more uh, vocal recording versus room noise. That's really the only way to uh, improve the quality of your recordings in, uh, when you're recording with mediocre acoustics. So you can do that in a few different ways. You can do that by going on Amazon and buying uh, a wired lavalier microphone. That's cool, they're about $35. You hide the wire in your shirt, you clip the wire out here, people can barely tell, and uh, you're getting the microphone much closer to your voice. You can also do this by using the headphones that came with your cell phone. Those headphones have a microphone built in and when you wear the headphones, the microphone kind of hangs around here-ish and, and you'll get a, a recording with the microphone really close to you. Or if you have Bluetooth headphones, for example, AirPods, uh, that, those also have microphones that are really close to your mouth. And so that gets you more voice versus room noise. I hope this is, video has been helpful to you. I would just encourage you in the end to keep acoustic issues in perspective. People know you're recording in your house. And so as long as you're easily intelligible, you've accomplished your goal. There are two other videos in this series. The first one already exists. It's uh, basic tips on how to get the best light so your, your image in your cell phone looks the best and how to submit that well. The other, um, the other video is coming and it's for folks who really kind of don't understand how to use their cell phone camera or they don't understand how to upload it to Dropbox or Google Drive or, or whatever your church has asked you to do. That video is coming and I hope that these are helpful to your church in this difficult time.